Welcome back to another episode of You Dash here on Dash Sports TV. I'm your host for today's show, Cole Bagley, the assistant sports editor at the Daily Utah Chronicle. I am joined, as always, by Sammy Mora, the editor of the sports desk on the Daily Utah Chronicle. Sammy, we got Utah football, but it wasn't exactly what we were hoping for. But what'd you think? I'm tired first and foremost. Um, I got home late from the stadium last night, but it was worth it. It was good to be back up at Rice Eccles. It was kind of weird to be there with no fans. Saw our good bud Nathan of Trojan Dash. Had some conversation with him, but <sighs> there's a lot. There's a lot to break down with this game. So do we want to just jump into the good first? Yeah, I mean, let's just follow kind of the fashion of how last night's game went. It started off pretty good, so let's just start off pretty good and will kind of spiral out of control, but it's fine. Nice. Okay, so for me, there's there's two good things. There's one on the offense and there's one on the defense. My good on the offense is Ty Jordan. Um, the freshman showed a lot of flashes of what he can do. And he had 13, he had one rush for 13 yards and he had a catch for 21 yards. And I think Utah fans should be really excited for him because I think that they're going to use him in kind of a Britton Covey-esque type role, if that makes sense, especially because Covey was out last night. Um, he has he has the potential to be really good, whether it be from the backfield or catching stuff out of the flat. I think he's going to be great. Yeah, I, I really liked his performance. Um, Coach Witt said in the post-game press conference that he really gave them a spark early on, and I felt like that too. Um, I think he had like a sweep play. Um, where he was able to get a first down and run a couple guys over for a few extra yards. I think it gave him like 13, 14 yards on the play. And then he caught a couple passes and did a couple other things. So um, he is kind of an unexpected, um, a, a welcome. Well, I welcome him. He is unexpected <laughs> and um, words are hard, but I'm tired because last night we were up super late. Um, but yeah, he he was great, and I think one of the best things that happened last night, if you can say that it was necessarily good, um, was the committee of running backs. Jordan Wilmore, Dem Brumfield, Ty Jordan, um, they combined for 22 carries and 98 yards. So not 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 fantastic, but if you not had one production. of those guys doing Yeah, not that. the production level we expected from the Utah running backs, but it was still good to see that they were able to get some stuff done on the ground. Yeah, um, I mean, if you had one, uh, if you had just one of those guys running for ninety-eight yards, that would be, you know, suffice. That would suffice. That'd be that would be well done. So, um, yeah, he and Ty Jordan even had a few Moss-like plays. I'd say he ran over several defenders, picked up some extra yards. So I, I hope to see more of him. I hope that um, we we're able to see him maybe getting a few more minutes than potentially George Wilmore, Devin Brumfield next time Utah plays. Um, and Coach Witt even mentioned that in the press conference. He said, you know, until one of these guys stands out, all four of them um, are going to continue to to run run the football. And he said, if that's how it goes the rest of the season, that's how it'll go. That's how it's going to go. What Witt says, Witt does. So, um, Let's talk about the defense. So there was there was some good on this defense. Let's 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 not say there wasn't anything good that happened in this Utah defense. But I had two shining stars on that Utah defense, and it was our linebacking core, Nephi Sewell and Devin Lloyd. So before the season started, um, we didn't. We were kind of we were not worried, but we just didn't know what was going to happen with the linebacking core because we had Devin, but we didn't know who was going to be lining up next to Devin. And when Nephi kind of came into the scene, everyone was kind of like, oh, like, how's that going to work and stuff? I, he, he killed it. He killed it. Like, so good. He had, he was everywhere. He had 11, he had actually had 10 tackles. He, um, and then he had the scoop and score and he had an interception. Very, very, very good for Nephi, and I enjoyed watching him play last night. Yeah, so the word I was looking for earlier uh, with Ty Jordan is an unexpected surprise, and I'd say Nephi was the exact same thing. I, Sam, to be honest, I didn't even know who he was really coming in. Um, didn't have a lot of information on him, didn't know who he was. And ironically, kind of just going back, I was most worried about the defense going into the season and into this game. 
five freshmen saw time on that side of the ball and three of them were in the secondary. Um, I mean, I know they allowed 33 points, 264 yards, but if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, I think the Utah defense only had one series that U S scored on a complete drive against Utah's defense, meaning that it wasn't a turnover that put the defense in a bad position. I think it was, you know, Utah punted and it was probably a really bad punt, which we'll talk about later. (laughs) Yes. Utah punted and um, USC drove the ball down the field. Uh, There's a couple busted plays, some bad coverage, but I mean, to only give up one pass, really one series where you, you know, USC marches down the whole field and scores on you. I was impressed by that. I'm not going to put the other touchdowns on the defense because when the offense gives up the ball inside your own red zone. What do you, what's the defense really going to do? Especially, I think the fumble was recovered on like the six yard line. Yeah, it was like on the it was like inside the five. It was not a good. It was not good. And then Rising got hurt on that too. It was just it was it was just a mess. But I want to also talk about Devin Lloyd for a hot second. I'm we're it's not surprising that he led the team in tackles with eleven. But mm. it was just really good to see him out there and just just doing what he does. Um. It was really nice. I love watching Devin play. Um, I think he has a very bright future. I think he's going to be in the NFL someday. And I, j- I love Devin Lloyd. Like him wearing the number zero just makes my heart just happy just because I, I, I love number zero for jerseys. So that's cool. But I also want to give a quick honorable mention of the defensive line for Utah. They looked pretty good at times. Devin Kafusi was the one who had the strip sack on Slovis that led to Mm -hmm. Sewell's scoop and score. The defensive line looked really good at times. Um, Xavier Carlton, our freshman, true freshman, was out there a couple times. He had some, he had some big, he had some, he whiffed a couple of times, but he also had some big tackles. So I think overall, like the areas that I, I was expecting, there was, there was some good, even though like, it's kind of like, you kind of just don't want to look at the good on this game, especially because of how hard it was and how rough it was. There's still a lot of things that Utah fans can be proud of and think and like be like, oh yeah, that's going to be good for the future because you have a good set of running backs. Your defensive line shows potential. Your linebacking court looks like there's not going to be any drop off from last season. So I think mm-hmm. that's fine. I think I, there's there's good as much as we don't want to acknowledge it at times. Yeah, and, and the mistakes were just I think mostly like if there's a theme it would be just inexperience um you know a a couple busted coverage plays where i think the defender just lost the receiver um and 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 wit even said like this is probably the best receiving core in the pac 12 yeah i'd I'd have to agree with that potentially the best quarterback in the back in the pac 12 um yeah it's a it's a hot take and i and i think he's i think he's at least up there i think it's between him um and whoever you're thinking, Sammy, but I think Slovis is pretty good. Slovis um, is good, but I don't think he's he's not my he's not my fave in the conference. Yeah, but the jury's still out for me on that because there's still I don't know what's going on at, at this point. True, but I mean, I, I I'll give it up for the Utah defense. I was really impressed. The the um, how many freshmen were out there taking reps, and they did pretty well, and so. And there's there's one more thing I, I kind of want to um, cover and address um, before we move on to the next topic. And it seems to happen every year, Sammy. You know this. When we have a bad loss, a bad game, everybody, all the youth fans sound the alarm, and it's fire the coaches, fire Wit. He's been around too long. Get rid of him. Mm-hmm. Do Guys, do we not realize that in college football, you have a ton of turnover? So much turnover. It's not like... You can. It's not like the NFL where you can keep you can a star people, player. Yeah, and where you can sign them to a contract. These kids are here exactly. for four to five years, depending if on that, and even even three. Look at Jalen yeah. Johnson, who was here for three. Some of the best players are only there for two to three years, and you're lucky to hang on to players like Tyler Huntley and Zach Moss as long as we did. But then mm-hmm. when they leave, you have to rebuild, and that's yeah. okay. And I think a coach should be judged on how well he rebuilds. You know, you're going to have years like what I expect this year to be after Mm -hmm. seeing these guys play where you lost your starting quarterback. You lost your starting running back. You lost, I believe nine starters on the defensive end. And most of them went to the NFL. When you lose that, when you lose that core, which the Utah defense was the strength, the, the, 
the biggest um, contributing factor, in my opinion, to wins last year, you're you're going to struggle. And you know what? You just you hang on for the ride. You commit, and you just you see what the coaching staff can do. I think you yeah. judge the coach on how quickly they bounce back when they lose. You know, if it's if it's yeah. five six years of if it's five six years of garbage, sure, then you can start saying, call it. "Hey, call it. This guy's done." But if it's mm-hmm. one season or two seasons, come on, guys, give the guy a break. I will add this before we jump on to the next topic. Scott in the comments said that our defense killed it. Yes, Scott, they had they had they had the good moment. They had some good moments, but there's also some some not so great moments. But um, I think a lot of Utah fans were aware heading into the season that this was going to be a rebuilding season, like uh, not even a rebuilding, a reloading, as the team says. It's a reload season because you lost nine players on that defense. You lost your starting quarterback. You lost your starting running back. You lost an offensive lineman. You lost a wide receiver. But I think also you got to realize that Utah was playing. Utah hadn't played a game up to this point. USC had played two. Also, we are coming off of COVID. Like, we still don't know who was affected. Um, I will mention, so Porter Larson of ESPN 700 did say that, oh, Scott, actually, I just found out you're a USC fan. Your defense did kill it. Um, so, good. You guys did. You guys you guys did good. But, um, US, but I lost my train of thought there for a hot second. But, Port, oh, yeah, Porter Larson of ESPN 700 did say that the offensive line was one of the groups that was most decimated by COVID, and it was kind of evident last night. 